in terms of uh, teaching in the Masjid al Nabawi, which, uh, which is a great honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in 2012, sometime in the spring, I got a text message uh, in Arabic, and it said, Noble Sheikh, you have been. It's a Fadilat al Sheikh and Murashah. You have been um, selected or nominated, if you will, to teach in the Prophet's Masjid. You need to respond within a day or something like that. So I'll be honest with you, I thought that it was the wrong number. And um, I usually don't respond, like, you know, to text messages. I don't know where it's coming from. I was busy too, I was very busy. I was in the heat of trying to work out my uh, proposal for my doctorate, and I was like, I really don't have time for this. I said, but this message is important, and they sent it to the wrong number, so they need to, I need to make sure that they know that the person that the letter is intended for is not just not responding, you know, because they were like, you have a day to respond type of thing. So I was like, man, this is important. That This person needs to be able to know. So I, I, I called the number, because I was going to, Tell the person, look, I think you got the wrong number. You should contact, uh, you know, whoever this message is supposed to be for. So when I called the number, the person on the other line said, uh, Sheikh Tahir. And then it hit me that this message was for me because the person answered it like that. And I was like, Salaam Alaikum. And the person was like, Wa Alaikum Salaam Wa Rahmatullah. Yeah, so you got the message. And I was like, Yes, I got the message, but it still had resonated yet because it was like I still did not think the message was for me So then at that point they said, okay, uh, look, you know, you need to send your CV to um, the Mudir uh, Shuna Ta'aleem, which is the head of uh, teaching affairs for the Prophet's Masjid So I did that there was a, a brief interview So they do like their initial screening or whatever like that from there, I guess about three weeks to a month went by. And then there were a group of us who had been nominated to or selected to teach in the Prophet's Masjid. A group of us meaning from different, uh, representing different languages. And many of them were my colleagues, uh, classmates. So there were two Indonesians who were classmates of mine during the doctorate program. It was a Nigerian brother who was a classmate of mine when I was doing the um, postgraduate uh, diploma in Dawa. And uh, uh, another brother, Pakistani brother, uh, Abdul Basit, uh, uh, who's got his doctorate now. But we actually, we actually started the Mahat together in 1996. And, um, and subhanAllah. So there were, I don't know, maybe seven or eight of us who were going for this interview at the agency, they call it the agency that represents the Shun al Haramain, they call it the affairs of the Haramain, so it's like the official agency. And you go in, there's a room, there, there are three people, I'd never met any of them before, they were all, you know, Mashaikh, all representatives of the Haramain. And uh, it, was, it was intense. Um, you go in, it really felt like an interrogation room when you go in, it was like one light bulb, there was this chair. And they were sitting on sofas, and, and they literally sit you on this chair in the middle. It really did feel like, um, like an interrogation room. And I, I think they did that on purpose. And um, they asked you a series of questions. Some of the questions were, you know, academic. But a lot of the questions were more about how you handle disturbances and disruptance and, you know, people asking you um, crazy questions and how would you respond to this? What would you say about that? And so after that, there was a period of about six months we didn't hear anything. And then that was, so that took us to about November of 2012, which is when the decree came down that I guess at least uh, five of those other brothers who interviewed with me at least were also appointed to teach in the message of the Prophet but again, that was like a six month process because it goes through, first it goes through local police and then it goes through what they call the DGI, which is like the Saudi version of the FBI. So they're doing all types of background checks and checking, basically checking you out. 
and uh, goes through whatever process they have in the Ministry of the Interior. I'm not sure where it goes after that. Uh, and then that's when you get official. That's when you become official. So that started, that was November 2012. I taught my first uh, class in April, I believe, of 2013. I started by teaching 40 hadith of an Imam and Nawi, and that was at the suggestion of uh, uh, one of my closest sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Razak al Badr, Hafidhullah Ta'ala. Yes, uh, up until this point, I have been the only one that has been appointed to teach in the English language. You know, I, I want to share this. I got a call, maybe around that same time, I don't know, it was sometime in the beginning of 2013. I got a call from Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Abad Al Badr, Hafidullah. And he said to me, he said, uh, uh, Sheikh Firanda gave me the good news. And Firanda is, the, is my Indonesian classmate who was also at the same time appointed to teach in the Prophet's Masjid. He since, uh, he since left Medina and going back to Indonesia. He got his, got his doctorate. And I said, Alhamdulillah, you know, I was just, uh, you know, grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Sheikh said, listen, I have some advice for you. He said, you have to prepare well for each and every class. You have to prepare well for each and every class. And it was interesting because I had spoken to a number of, of my Mashaikh and things like that. And he was the only one that said that. And it was great advice. And he said, he said I remember, is what he was telling me. He said, I remember when some of the ulama had been appointed to teach in the Prophet's Masjid. And he said, Sheikh bin Baz told them, prepare well for each and every class. He said, and I'm just passing that advice on to you. He said, and these were great scholars. He said, some of them were my, you know, teachers personally. And even with that being the case, the Sheikh told them to prepare for each and every class. And uh, I noticed that that has been the same path of Sheikh Abdul Razak himself. Uh, you can tell that he prepares for each and every class. And I took that advice to heart. And, uh, you know, it, it was great advice, and I thank him for that, you know. Let, let me, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say this to every talib ilm, to anybody that's going to give a khutbah ever, or a class, or anything else. Make sure that you're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If your intention is sincere, you know, I need to do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can block out the noise. No doubt, I mean, no doubt that that platform, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a tremendous honor. And I mean, at that point, you know, I'm not, I, I was, I'm, not four, I'm four years removed from it now. But at that point, it was like, it, and it's still, it's still an honor every day to be able to teach the people the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is, it's, it's a blessing. And to do it in the masjid of the Prophet is, is an even greater blessing. And at that time, I can honestly say that I think that I was nervous going into it. But once I sat down, and you start by saying, Inna alhamdulillah. This is not about me. This is not about me trying to impress anybody. This is about conveying the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you're confident that what you're teaching people is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there's nothing to be scared about. There's nothing to be nervous about. So I think I was more nervous just trying to picture myself teaching in the masjid of the Prophet and also knowing that there's a different type of preparation that's required because you're not necessarily teaching your people, if you know what I mean. Like, the, the majority of the people that you're teaching are not Americans. There is a cultural gap sometimes, an idiomatic gap. You might use phrases that people don't understand if you don't, you know, prepare for that. And so, um, you know, th that, that first day was sublime. It was. It was sublime. And it took a lot of uh, self-reflection and just um, trying to make sure that what I was doing uh, was sincere for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, you know, that, that set the path for, for every other time, alhamdulillah.